This is a country stitches pattern. Um, it's, it's designed to make these um, magnets. There's three different designs in this pattern. This particular pattern comes with your weaver's cloth and the pattern. You transfer the pattern onto the weaver's cloth. Some patterns, I would say most, come with the weaver's cloth and the pattern is already transferred on for you um, before you start. Um, some patterns come with just a paper pattern. You need to provide the weaver's cloth and transfer that pattern yourself, but they are priced accordingly. So they'll be less if you have to do the transferring yourself, um, but most come pre-stamped on your weaver's cloth. So what you'll need to do punch needle embroidery is you will need, of course, a pattern. And I do recommend starting with something simple. Try to avoid a lot of details in your first pattern. Um, you'll need a good sharp pair of embroidery scissors. Make sure that when you cut, clip those threads off um, on the back side that there are no fuzzies, no fraying. We don't want any strands. Keep the back nice and clean. So make sure your embroidery scissors are sharp. Um, and you will need um, the needle, and this is the Cameo Ultra Punch that we recommend and we sell here um, at the Pattern Hutch. It comes with three different size tips, small, medium, and large, two threaders, and your instruction booklet. Um, it's an excellent value, and, um, and it will come with everything you need. The instruction booklet is very good. The lap stand we also recommend. It's a Morgan quality product. We recommend the 7 and 10 inch lap stand. You can use either size, um, but these are made in America with a lifetime guarantee on those. So those are your basic supplies that you need to get started with punch needle embroidery. We are the Pattern Hutch in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and uh, we are demoing punch needle embroidery. So um, we use the Morgan lap stand. Um, it is a, um, a patented tongue and groove locking mechanism that will hold your weaver's cloth drum tight. Very important. You are punching on weaver's cloth, um, and this will be what your uh, pattern will look like when you start, and you always want your pattern facing up. Um, you're working from the reverse, punching through to the front. Um, so I have one here that is partially finished. We're working from this side, although this is your, your side that you're going to see when you're finished. What we're doing is, um, this is a design by um, Caught Up in Stitches. It's a pin, and this is what it will look like when you're finished. I'm sorry, this is not, not Caught Up in Stitches. Um, this is a design by um, Country Stitches. Um, it's, a, it's a pin, you could also turn it into a magnet. Um, but this will be the finished product when you're finished. So all I've done here is I have sewn some excess weaver's cloth onto the outside so that I can uh, put it in this 10 inch side of the hoop. You can use the seven inch if you would like, which would be fine for this one here. Um, however, I'm more comfortable working on the 10 inch. If you have any hand issue, carpal tunnel, arthritis, I really recommend going ahead and adding some excess weaver's cloth onto um, your pattern and just being able to get that on the 10 inch lap stand. You wanna make sure that it is drum tight As you punch, you're going to be constantly pulling your needle across the fabric so you don't want your fabric to move at all underneath you. So just kind of cinch it down. You want that nice and tight. Okay. We're using the Valdani Embroidery Floss. It is um, a three strand ball of cotton embroidery floss. You can use any kind of embroidery floss that you would like. Um, and this is the Cameo Ultra Punch, the needle that we use. Um, there are other good needles on the market. This is the best if you have any hand issue at all. It's very comfortable. It's a very good quality needle. This gauge on the side of the needle um, sets the length of your loop on the front side. So most of your patterns call for you to punch on a one. That's pretty standard. Um, and so, but your pattern will tell you. So to thread your needle, um, you're going straight up through the body of the needle, catching your floss in there, and pulling straight through. And then thread the eye of the needle. Just reach in there and pull that up through.
Now there is a booklet that comes with the needle and it does walk you um, all the way through threading. Um, also um, we're using a small tip. This needle set comes with small, medium, and large tips. Small is your is what most of your most of the time you're going to use. That's good for two to three strands of floss. Again, your booklet um, will tell you that in the in the needle kit. So um, I've already done all the details here. Details must be done first. Then you need to fill in around your details. You're going to punch all the way down. Drag the tip of the needle across the fabric, never letting the tip come off. I'm just feeling as I drag across a couple threads and punching back down, nice short stitches. It's not an exact length of stitch that you're looking for. However, when you, when you do a row of punch, if you turn it over onto the front side and you see space between your loops, then you have drug your needle too far. You need to shorten up your stitches. And you can see I'm not turning my needle. Keep your needle in the same position and just turn your lap stand to work around your pattern. So I'm going to just stop here. I could just come all the way around here, but I'm going to stop. Anytime you want to stop, you want to hold on to your last stitch and snip all the way off. You're not tying any knots. So you just, want, um, you just want a little tail to begin, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in around this star. Typically when you're outlining your, um, your smaller details, it's best to just do a couple rows around there. And again, I'm not turning my needle hardly at all, really just working the lap stand. This is where the lap stand really does um, make things a lot easier. It's quite awkward if you are just using a locking lip hoop without the stand, although it is possible, but we do recommend the lap stand. And at home, this is in my lap also, so you don't have to stand to do it. It does work right in your lap. And I'm just going to, you could go around here several, um, several times. As soon as we finish this side, though, we'll turn it over. So again, hold on to your last stitch. Snip all the way off. And then you can take either your, your hands or the, the tip of your scissors and just kind of make sure that your outside color um, has not gotten mixed in with, with your detail color and that looks good. So we'll just finish outlining this and basically I like to just outline and work my way in. I'm also leading with the side of my needle. If you notice, there's a the bevel makes a little scoop. So if the bevel is facing the direction you're punching, what's going to happen is as you drag across the weaver's cloth, it's going to actually pull against the weave and bounce around. You won't have good control of your needle. So I'm leading with the side. Again, this is in the booklet that comes with the needle that does show a diagram of the preferred method to hold your needle. And so as I'm punching, if I were punching left to right, that bevel would actually be facing me. Because again, I'm leading with the side. If I were punching towards myself, then the bevel would be to the left. And most people are more comfortable punching left to right or towards themselves, but really, it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the, the overall piece in any way. Just find what's most comfortable for you. So I would just keep on filling on around here. Um, but we're going to move to this little um, vine that's coming off the stem. This is a little more challenging of a detail because you're just working with one row of punch and then having to fill in around. So we're going to do uh, this little vine here. Um, I'm going to fill that in 
um, around just so you can see how to do that detail. So again, punching with on a number one. Punch all the way down, drag that over. You do want to make sure when you're doing any detail where there's just one row of punching that you make your stitches very short. If there's any space between your loops on the front, it will show it will show more readily in one row of punch than if you're doing an entire um, area in several rows. So just keep turning that lap stand. Always make sure that as you're punching, your floss is always feeding freely through the handle of your needle. If there's any tension on your floss as you're advancing your needle, it will actually pop your stitches out. So make sure that it's uh, freely flowing through the handle of your needle. And just keep turning that lap stand. Now on the front, this vine here is what we've just done. Although here you do see quite, you, you do see a little, a little um, loop inside. Um, sometimes when you do a detail, it will just kind of look like a blob and you really won't see that space. You'll be able to see it from the back side, but not always from the front. So you can again take the tip of your scissors and kind of clean up your, your lines. It will just make filling in around it a little bit easier. So now this is the background color. Now anytime you um, are filling in around one row, you want to be careful to not get too close to that row. Really there should be a little bit of space between your rows. In fact on the finished piece here you can see, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there is a little bit of space between the rows. You don't want to get them too um, too close next to each other. What will happen is if you are too close to the row that you've just done, you can catch your loops on the front side and then you end up with a little snag on the front. If that happens, just clip that, just snip it all the way down to the pile and you really won't notice, but you don't want to be doing that too often in your piece. If you are, then it's probably because you're getting your rows too close to each other, so just spread that out. This kind of detail um, really takes the longest. And once you've done a couple of projects, by the way, you don't have to clip off until you're finished, um, but if that tail is in your way, go ahead and snip it off so you're not catching it and pushing it through. So by the time you've done a couple of projects, you really can do any detail. It doesn't take long to get a good feel for punch needle. Now I could just go on around and finish filling in around this stem, but I'm going to go ahead and clip this off and do the inside of this loop. So you're just going to keep turning until you've filled this in. It really does take less uh, floss than you think. Um, just a few punches will really fill that in nicely. Remember there's a loop on the front, so although there may look like there's some space left on the back, um, always turn it over and just make sure if it looks full on the front, 
then there's no need to put any more in. But if you do have some sparseness on the front, it could be that you're leaving too much space between your rows. If that's the case, just go in with, um, with the row in between those and fill that in. Um, sometimes sparseness happens when you're just dragging too far and your stitches are too long. In that case, there's really not much you can do just to try to get in the habit of keeping your stitches nice and short. Um, I do see that I have a little tiny snag, one little strand, so I'm going to go ahead and just clean that up by just snipping that right down to the pile. And you will not see that. Um, and again, take the tip of your scissors and just kind of clean this detail up. It really helps get better definition. So I would just um, continue on around, um, but we're going to go ahead and do the leaf. Again, you don't need much floss, just enough to, to hold on while you get started. Punch all the way down, drag over. One thing that helps is as you are lifting, if you pull in the direction that you want your needle to advance, pull as you're lifting and that way your needle will slide over and not lift up off. That's probably the number one mistake that people make with punch needle embroidery is um, they're they're lifting up off of the weaver's cloth and even slightly you're releasing that tension and pulling up that last loop. So if that's what you're doing you will have shorter loops on the front of your piece and you will have excess floss on the back where you don't want excess floss. So just try to keep that needle skimming right across the surface of the weaver's cloth. And I'm just going to continue to work my way around until this leaf is filled in. Make sure also that you're, go you're hitting all the way down to the weaver's cloth, um, really straight on. You don't want to come in at an angle. That, that little bit of needle that you're seeing, um, if you can see that, that loop is just going to be a little bit shorter on the front. So you want to make sure that you get in a good habit of coming all the way down, hitting all the way down with every punch. Straight up and down. As you're dragging your needle across, it's natural for it to lean. Just make sure that when you when you hit back down that you're you're hitting straight on. Not keeping your needle at an angle. Okay, so we're finishing up this leaf here. Hold that stitch down. And this is where we started, so we'll just snip that right off. So you can see it's nice and full. I'll just kind of clean up those edges. And then we're ready to finish up the background. Of course, we have to finish the, that section of the pumpkin there. So when you finish, this is what you will have, and this is the back. There are full instructions in your, um, your pattern. Again, this is a country stitches pattern, um, and there's full instructions on how to finish this um, into your pin. Again, you could also make this into a magnet if you would prefer, or you could put a little ribbon on the back if, if you want to turn it into an ornament or a tag um, for a basket. So there's a lot of ways to finish your punch needle embroidery, um, but it's great to just jump in there and get started. Very easy to do. Anybody can do punch needle embroidery.